When we first arrived in Antarctica, I saw snow mountains around us with a beautiful sunrise. I looked down into the water, there were giant humpback whales around us. My motivation is very, very simple. I've been swimming for over 30 years. I've seen the oceans change and I'm passionate about trying to protect these last wilderness areas on this earth. Welcome to Season 10 of the Sustainable Asia podcast, Will China Save Antarctica's Oceans? South African swimmer Louis Pugh and Chinese freediver Jesse Liu have risked life and limb to advocate for the oceans surrounding Antarctica. But why did they do it? In this episode, we turn the microphone over to Jennifer Turner, director of the China Environment Forum for the Woodrow Wilson Center. She's going to chat with Lewis and Jesse about why they chose to plunge themselves into the frozen seas off the South Pole and how they're using this amazing feat as a platform in China and Russia to advocate for new marine protected areas around Antarctica. My name is Jennifer Turner. I direct the China Environment Forum at the Woodrow Wilson Center in Washington, D.C. I was lucky enough to chat with Jessia Liu, who is the first Chinese national to break the free diving record and the first person in history to free dive in Antarctic waters. She holds six free diving national championships, and she is sitting on her balcony in Hawaii with bird accompaniments in the background while we talk. I'd just like to dive into the questions, if you don't mind, pun intended. Now, your swimming career is a bit different from others. You started in your first free diving when you were 29 years old in Hawaii after you completed your PhD in pharmacology in the United States. That's a big career switch. So I was kind of wondering, what inspired you to dive into this ocean career? I always dreamed of diving when I was a kid. I didn't actually get to learn diving until I was in graduate school. That was the first conference trip to Hawaii. I uh, got the opportunity to see the ocean underwater myself. That was uh, the most amazing experience in my life. So I actually moved to Hawaii after school. Then the Hawaiian people free dive, they fish underwater. So I got really intrigued and I wanted to be able to learn that skill. You're doing all these great diving in Hawaii. You've done competitions around the world, but you went to go diving in Antarctica. I'd like you to tell me a little bit about your experience diving in Antarctica from start to finish. It was in 2017. I received an uh, opportunity to join expedition trip to sail across Drake Passage to free dive and explore. I felt first it was a really rare opportunity to see that part of the world. But it was also a very big challenge for me because I was always afraid of cold weather. Antarctic water is minus two degrees. But one thing I learned free diving really gave me the courage that is to um, face the fear directly and not run away from it and to find a way to manage the emotion when the fear comes on. By the time when we get to Antarctica, it was like going into a very peaceful heaven. It was so pristine and undisturbed. It was unbelievable. And it's so quiet. We got into the bay. Surrounding us were um, humpback whales breaching out of the water. We can already see penguins kind of jumping around uh, the icebergs. It was almost like I somehow kind of felt reborn into a new world. Did you have to do some special training before you did some free diving in Antarctica? I would say I uh, could have done more training for it. Uh, We did have good (laughs) equipment. Yeah, we had nine millimeter thick rubber material um, in a custom sizing made suit that kept me uh, fairly warm for almost an hour in that water. The one thing I did notice is as long as a few drips of water that leaks through my mask, 
I immediately get a very strong brain freeze. You know, with that wetsuit, it was almost feeling like walking like a penguin because we had to use large amount of weights to offset the buoyancy from the wetsuit. So I had a belt on my waist that was 12 kilograms. And if I dive down five meters, I, I sink like a stone. So that was very challenging for sure. Were you motivated beyond getting over your fear of the cold to help raise awareness of the need to conserve this beautiful Southern Ocean environment? Yes. The Antarctic continent is, you know, the most pristine place on Earth. So what I remember is seeing the big seals, leopard seals. When we come across a seal on the ice, he was just resting. And when our little boat parked right next to that iceberg, the seal just lifted his head and looked at us uh, like, oh, hello, my friends. Hoi. <laughs> Welcome. And he went back to sleep. And, and there was no other reaction to us being there at all in that animal. Jacia Lu can hold her breath underwater for over eight minutes and has been praised by the media as the Chinese goddess of free diving. Yet this amazing woman found that interacting with leopard seals and humpback whales in Antarctica was truly eye-opening. The first trip I went to Antarctica, I think, was more for me to be aware of the problem. It wasn't planned as a trip to raise awareness, but it definitely brought back a lot of footage, photos, and uh, ideas. Um, so I did share um, my experience with uh, public talks in China. When Jessia came back to China from Antarctica, she shared the mental journey of her difficult diving experiences to many local enthusiasts. Jessia had been saddened by the profound impact human influence had on the health of our oceans. After the trip to Antarctica, she felt that in remote regions like the Southern Ocean, animals seemed curious about humans and were willing to come close to divers. She used her stories to let young people in China know that it is important to document, respect, and appreciate the ocean's beauty. Jessia told her audiences that every diver is an ambassador of the ocean. She said divers should share their experiences and raise awareness about marine conservation. Another famous ocean athlete, Louis Pugh, has also used his talents to raise awareness for what Jessia called the most pristine place on earth. A British South African endurance swimmer, Lewis was appointed to be the first United Nations patron of the oceans after completing a long distance swim in all of the world's seven seas. So Lewis, tell us about why you wanted to swim in Antarctica. I went down to Antarctica in 2005 for the first time and I did a swim inside a volcano. I had never, ever done a swim inside a volcano before. There's an island just off the peninsula called Deception Island. And it's an amazing place because it's shaped like a volcano. It's like a horseshoe shape. And we sailed in, we anchored the ship. And the first thing I wanted to do was swim in, in, in Antarctica. And so I dived in. Underneath me, I just simply couldn't believe what I was seeing. This place, a hundred years ago, was the epicenter of the whaling industry. There were literally hundreds and hundreds of whale bones, spine bones, jaw bones, rib bones. Some of them were piled up so high that I was literally touching them as I undertook the swim. That was the moment when I realized that I had to use my swimming and my legal background, my maritime law background, to try and be a voice for the world's oceans. I finished the swim, I sailed back to South Africa and I said, I now need to speak up about what's happening in the oceans because I've seen them change so much over these 30 years. Since then, Lewis became known for his speedo diplomacy because his swimming feats in the South Pole and his diplomatic work in Russia were both key to establishing the Ross Sea MPA in Antarctica the largest marine protected area in the world. 
But at first, people thought his idea of speedo diplomacy was crazy. When I said that I wanted to get the Ross Sea across the line, and the way I was going to do it was I was going to sail from the bottom of New Zealand. I was then going to sail all the way into the Ross Sea. I was going to do a swim there. And then I was going to try and go to Russia and get a meeting with President Putin to tell him to protect the area. You know what everyone said to me? You're smoking something very heavy, Lewis. Marine life in Antarctica has been protected since 1982 through an agreement called the Convention on the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, or CAMLR. China and Russia are two of the 26 members, and it takes a unanimous vote by all the members to create marine protected areas in the Southern Ocean. Marine protected areas, or MPAs, limit fishing activities and safeguard the marine ecosystem. Today, there are two marine protected areas in Antarctica, the South Orkney Islands, proposed by the UK in 2009, and the Ross Sea MPA that came into effect after Lewis's celebrated swim there in 2015. I've just done the swim in East Antarctica, and I'm thinking to myself, my feet are so sore. I can't do a swim in East Antarctica and in the Weddell Sea and in the Antarctic Peninsula. I'm getting on now. I'm 50 years old. We can't keep going back every single year asking and asking, asking, because this is so important for all of us. But it took a fairly long time for Russia and China to finally agree to sign and ratify the Ross Sea MPA within Kamler. And Louis Pugh did go back. In fact, earlier this year, he swam his most dangerous swim ever through the narrow sea ice tunnels of East Antarctica. It's so frightening swimming underneath the ice. I mean, I, I remember the nights before, you know, so I was in my tent and I hear the wind blowing and you realize that the next day you're going to go down there and you're going to swim underneath the ice. There's a massive battle taking place between two wolves, a good wolf and a bad wolf. And that whole of that night before the swim, all I was thinking about was the possibility of ice falling on my head or getting extreme hypothermia. Luckily, I was able to get my mind right just before the swim. And that he did. His 10-minute swim through the narrow sea ice of East Antarctica is seminal. And we'll put it in the show notes for you to watch. And I really want you to watch it. It's amazing. But what message, Lewis, do you hope to get across as you risk your life swimming in the Southern Ocean? When we go to Antarctica, we go as guests. This is not our home. There's something fundamentally wrong about us pushing animals literally to the edge of extinction. I'll never ever forget being at Deception Island because those bones of those whales, they're still there today, preserved a hundred years later in those crystal clear waters of Deception Island. And one would think that it is a reminder of man's potential for folly, but it isn't. Because first we came for the seals and took them all out. And then we came for the whales and took them all out. And now we go for the Antarctic toothfish and we're hoovering them up. And now there are even industrial fishing fleets going down there and catching krill, the tiniest life down there in the Southern Ocean on which everything, everything relies. Marine animals in Antarctica are indeed suffering. The krill species that Lewis mentioned are slowly losing their habitat as a direct result of rising ocean temperatures and reduced sea ice. These shrimp-like crustaceans that take the center stage of the marine food web are now moving south, and their predators, like seals, whales, and penguins, will either follow them or go hungry. The abundance of the marine life there is so important. A healthy ecosystem feeds the whales that migrates you know, from the Antarctic to other regions. And we know that you know, overfishing is definitely a global problem right now. We don't have to learn the lessons which we learned 100 years ago, pushing the blue whale into extinction in the, in the Ross Sea and in other parts of Antarctica. We today can create together the single largest protected area 
on this earth. And it's very, very exciting. You know, very few times does one have the opportunity to bend history, to change the trajectory in which we're going. Today is an opportunity for that, though. Today means now, because the member nations of Kamler are meeting this week to decide whether they will approve three new marine protected areas in the Southern Ocean, the Weddell Sea, the East Antarctic, and the Antarctic Peninsula, MPAs. But as Jasia tells us, China is still on the fence about whether to protect their fishing interests in Antarctica or protect the Southern Ocean's unique biodiversity for future generations. Honestly, I feel this message is still very weak in China. I, I find that there is a huge gap that we need to connect, especially for Chinese people. You know, we represent you know, about almost 18% of the world population. So almost one out of five or six people in the world, one of them is Chinese. And if the culture can change, that can be more sustainable for the environment. I think that would make huge differences in the world. And I do believe in that ability and the power that the Chinese society have in order to make that change. While Jesse is optimistic that China will reach a positive decision to protect Antarctica waters and its marine ecosystem, Lewis stresses the importance of safeguarding marine biodiversity in the Southern Ocean and his commitment to help make that happen. We have to do something right now. Then it's the waters around Antarctica which are so vibrant and so important for all of us. Now is the time for Antarctica to be set aside for peace, for science, but also for wildlife. I will not stop. I will not stop swimming in Antarctica until that continent is properly protected. This episode of Season 10, Will China Save Antarctica's Oceans?, is produced by Sustainable Asia with support from the Pew Charitable Trusts. Special thanks to our guest host, Jennifer Turner, director of the China Environment Forum for the Woodrow Wilson Center. The episode was produced by me, Marcy Trent Long, alongside associate producers Shermaine Lee and Stella Chan. Thanks to our guests, Jesea Liu and Louis Pugh, Sound engineering by Chris Wood. Alexander Mobison created the intro-outro music made from repurposed and recovered waste items. We've also produced this series in Mandarin with hosts Bonnie Ao and Wu Yufei. We interviewed our guests, Jesse Lu in Mandarin, and put it on our Sustainable Asia Mandarin podcast, Ke Chi Shu Ya Zhou. After all, we are trying to use the voices of Asia to bring environmental reporting and research to global audiences. Thank you.